Welcome back to the channel, guys. If you're new to HD Zero or SharkBytes Digital FPV system, this video is for you. I'm going to show you all the tips and tricks you need to know to get started. I'm Jeff with Titan FPV. Let's get to it. You may be new to the system and you got a lot of questions that need to be answered and that's what I'm here to do today as well as give you some pro tips and do's and don'ts. So there's two options currently uh, for HD Zero or SharkBite uh, for a video receiver. You can get an inbuilt one in the Fat Shark Scout HDs or you can go to the module uh, you can use with pretty much any goggle that has an HDMI in port such as these HDO2s. You do have a few different options for cameras and VTXs with the system currently. At launch, only the PX5M.1 500 milliwatt dual board was announced along with the uh, Runcam HD nano camera. Shortly thereafter, Foxer released their Digisight V1 camera as another offering and Fatshark announced their Whoop uh, 200 milliwatt VTX that fits in many toothpick style frames. Uh, this has been a very reliable board. Uh, it's something I can recommend and it comes in at around 50 US dollars. So that's a good option. Foxair released their Digisight V2. Basically it just has a back on the camera, some adjusted camera settings uh, and a longer 150 millimeter MIPI cable. That's the cable that you use to connect the VTX to the camera. The SharkBite Race VTX was announced next. It is also a 200 milliwatt board that fits in a few modified frames. 533 has some frames that are compatible with the original Race VTX. It's also 200 milliwatts, and the main uh, takeaway is it adds smart audio functionality for uh, racing. The HD Zero branded Race V2 board was announced recently. I'll post a link up here. I did, recently did a review on this board. Uh, it's the same components, but they're moved to the side of the VTX. So it fits in a much smaller and traditional style form factor. And that's just something that you want to incorporate into your builds, guys. Always, you want to account for the size of the hardware, be it, it will it fit a nano cam. Most larger builds are obviously going to be set up for a micro size camera. You want to do a dry fit so you don't run in any clearance options. There are options on Thingiverse that are available to fit various uh, style frames and form factors. HD Zero announced their uh, micro camera recently made by Runcam. It's got uh, a larger sensor and a larger M12 lens versus the original nano size cameras. Uh, it does uh, provide a great image, uh, one of the best for SharkBite currently. These sold out quickly and, and I believe are not available anymore, but HD Zero announced their nano size version of the same camera. It uses the same sensor, but is in a smaller nano size form factor. The only caveat is it's using an M8 lens, so it may not add as much light in as the uh, original micro size version. Foxair also announced their Digisight V3 cameras. Those are available on Foxair's website. I believe the first round of those are shipping here shortly. Those also use a larger size sensor. Another takeaway. Uh, SharkBite is currently only available with 16 by 9 sensors. Uh, the Scouts natively offer um, a 16 by 9 image, as well as uh, the HDO2s offer a 16 by 9 HDMI in signal. That's something to take into consideration. You are going to lose some vertical field of view. One way to combat that is to use a lens with a much wider field of view. HD Zero plans to release a much higher output VTX at the beginning of next year in January of 2022. Be on the lookout for that one, as well as a new V2 Whoop board that will have compatibility for 1S. The current board supports from 2 to 6S LiPo power. All right, those are the options for the system. Uh, it is not compatible with any other system. So SharkBite and HD Zero is the same system uh, the technology is manufactured by HC0 DiviMath. They custom make the chipset for the system. HD0 does support the full Betaflight canvas mode. If you're familiar with analog, 
you can get all the same OSD elements with HD0 or SharkBite. I've got a how-to video on how to accomplish that with some CLI commands. I also have an install video. I'll post that link up at the top as well. These are all going to be down in the video description, so just check out my full SharkBite HD0 playlist. You're going to have as many resources to you as possible within that playlist. Okay, so now we've got some troubleshooting headed your way. Um, these are things that I found over my use of the system. I was an early adopter uh, and purchased it with a launch bundle. So I've been using HD0 or SharkBite for over a year, and these are things I've found that have worked for me. Uh, and any issues that I've run into that you guys may not have to run into or may not have an issue resolving those. So hopefully these are helpful for you. Okay, the first one, quality antennas are a must. So this is a digital uh, video system. And then as such, it requires high quality transmitting and receiving antennas. I do have a review on these Luminaire double axis antennas. These are made by TrueRC. So I run these in tandem along with the built-in patch on the video receiver, and it offers much better penetration and coverage overall on the quad side. I use these TrueRC Singularities. I've got this one on my Twig 4-inch. TrueRC also makes an OCP antenna uh, that does quite well. Video Aerial Systems offers some good quality antennas. Just keep that in mind. You don't want to skimp on antennas. And when you do purchase the VTX, they do not come with an antenna. You'll want to purchase those accordingly. So another reason for a poor signal could be your SMA connection. If you're running the double stack board or uh, a UFL to SMA on the uh, Whoop VTX, a pinch connection or just a damaged uh, pigtail could be the cause of your poor video signal as well. If you have the Foxier Digisight V1 or V2, those are analog as well as digital cameras. There is a analog mode that sometimes you can switch. I believe it's by holding the left button for too long with the sticks on your transmitter. That will put the camera into analog mode and you're going to lose the signal on your HD0 feed. You can use the included joystick. Go ahead and connect your joystick. You're going to hold the left button, power the quad on, and hold that down for about 10 seconds. I believe that will put the camera back into digital mode and you should regain your image. When I first got the system, I also had a problem with a lack of image. It turned out to be my HDMI cable was faulty. Fat Shark sent me a replacement one free of charge. But in the meantime, I picked this one off Amazon. As you'll see, it fits a little bit differently. Uh, you do have access to the SD card uh, more easily than you do with the uh, factory cable, but it does hang down a bit lower. That hasn't been a problem for me. And I've, to this day, been using the cable I purchased from Amazon. I'll post a link in the video description for that one as well. You may not have a blue light on the VTX. That means that it's not communicating with the camera. So it could either be a faulty MIPI cable or a faulty camera. I have had one faulty camera after a crash. Yeah, just replacing that resolved the issue there. The video transmitter was fine. So you will want to secure your UFL connections down with a zip tie. The Race VTX as well as the Whoop boards have cutouts. Uh, the Race VTX also comes with a clamp that's secured with two screws. These will help you not to rip off your UFL connection. It's essentially the same video receiver in the Fast Shark Scouts HDs as well as the um, SharkBite VRX, but the firmware is different. Make sure that you flash the Scout HD firmware and not the VRX firmware. Uh, you will break your Scouts or lose some functionality if you flash the VRX firmware. There is a switch. If you do brick your device, interrupt uh, it while it's flashing. I'll also post a link here at the top on how to update your system. Uh, the Scouts have a cutout here. There's a switch here that you can toggle. You can use some tweezers or something thin to toggle that. And you're gonna uh, follow the procedure here on screen to recover your Scouts or your VRX. The VRX the switch is located on the back. 
uh, you'll do the same thing. Just flip that up while it's powered off, then plug it in. If you're gonna flash multiple VTXs, you can leave a text file on the root of the SD card. It's blank. You just want to label that do not remove dot text and place it on the root of the SD card. That way the system will not delete the firmware update installer after each time. If you don't do that, as soon as you power the VRX after the firmware update has been installed on the VTX, it will automatically remove that file and you'll have to go into your computer and manually add it back. So that's a, an option if you're flashing multiple VTXs and most of us are going to be. If you're like me, I have several quads set up on HD0. If you're stuck at 25 milliwatts, that does happen. Uh, you wanna make sure that your RX and TX pads are wired up correctly on the flight controller. Also, you may not have OSD. Uh, if you don't have OSD, consider swapping the RX and TX connections on your flight controller. This will resolve that issue. If the VTX is not communicating with the flight controller and you have low power mode enabled, then it will stay at 25 milliwatts. I think I stated already that you wanna do a dry fit on all your components uh, for your quads. The cameras are standard size, so they're either the uh, micro size camera or uh, most of them are the nano size. 14 by 14 millimeter. New HD zero camera is 14 by 16, so it's slightly taller, but you wanna take that into account when you're either selecting a TPU canopy to print or if you're fitting it in between standoffs. VTX, the one I commonly use is the, the S, the Whoop VTX, and that's a 25 and a half by 25 and a half Whoop board. If uh, your frame's set up to run a 20 by 20, in the back, it does come with an adapter, but you may want to uh, either print a mount, make sure that you do have, measure your frame, make sure you do have clearance for that VTX. If you do have one of the original Runcam HDs, uh, you may want to upgrade the lens. HD Zero has their own lens upgrade option that you can purchase on their website. I'll post a link in the video description, as well as uh, the Cadex Baby Rattel uh, 7G glass lens or Tarzier V2. Check that video out. Uh, that will improve your image quality. The newer cameras have better lenses. There is also a mod on uh, either printing your own case to add an M12 lens to a run cam HD. Ryan Quillett has a good video tutorial on that. These are some options. If you can't locate one of the newer cameras, if you want to get the best image available, these are some mods that you can do. On the, the original Digisci, I just lowered my sharpness down to 70. It was much over sharpened from the factory, and that gave me a more clear image on my Digisci. So we went over some options there if you're new to HD0 or SharkBite. I hope these have been informative and helpful for you guys. If you're not already subbed, please do so. Uh, give this video a thumbs up, share it. Post a comment down below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And we'll catch you in the next one.